is enforcing the will of God by going the ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He's not moved by our tears. He's not moved by our shouting. He's only moved by a shout of faith. Anytime you begin to please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work by faith. Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life will experience all round blessings by faith tonight we are looking at the subject engaging thanksgiving for divine intervention engaging thanksgiving for divine intervention Engaging thanksgiving for divine intervention. Remember our focus for today's fast was thanksgiving. So engaging thanksgiving for divine intervention. I want to begin by saying that divine intervention is needed when you are encompassed with enemies that are bigger than you. Divine intervention is needed when you are encompassed with enemies that are bigger than you. And at such time, the bigger God steps into the battle to intervene for you. I want to assure you that the bigger God in this month of September, our month of testimonies, will appear, will step into the situation and solve every problem for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The bigger God steps into the battle to intervene for you. God is strongest when the battle is toughest. God is strongest when the battle is toughest. And in case you are going through a tough battle, I want to assure you tonight that the strongest God is coming into it. If you are going through any fierce battle, if you are going through any issue, any challenge in life, I want you to know that the strong God is appearing and he's solving every issue in your life in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is to give him thanks. All you need to do is to give him praise. All you need to do is to adore him. All you need to do is to magnify him. All you need to do is to celebrate Jesus. Like David said in Psalm 68 verse 1. David said, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. David employed the method of Jehoshaphat. When the enemies rose up against him, and it was the method of praise and thanksgiving. It was the method of praise and thanksgiving. I pray for you after today, God will take over the battle for you. After today, he will intervene for you. After today, he will, you will experience a breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. After today, you will experience the goodness of God. You will experience the mercies of God. You will experience the favor of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will turn you into a laughter against your enemies. You will end this month triumphant in the name of Jesus. You will end this month triumphant in the name of Jesus. You will end this month triumphant in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to take note of this, number one. When you pray, you secure God's backing. 
But when you praise, you secure God's fronting. What a statement. When you pray, you secure God's backing. When you pray, God backs you. But when you praise, you secure God's fronting. Every time you pray, you are inviting God to come and back you up. But as you begin to praise him, you move him from your back to your front. I pray for you this beautiful Tuesday evening that as you step into thanksgiving, as you step into praise, may the Lord move from the back to your front in the name of Jesus. In praise, in thanksgiving, God takes the front position. In praise, in thanksgiving, God takes the front position. And when God is in front, he turns you from a victor to a triumphant person. I pray for you today. May the Lord turn you from a victor to a triumphant person through thanksgiving and praise. May the Lord turn you from a victor or from a victim to a triumphant person in the name of Jesus. So number one, I said when you pray, you secure God's backing. But when you praise, you secure God's fronting. And I said that every time you pray, you are inviting God to come and back you up. When you begin to pray, you are inviting God to come and back you up. But when you step into praise, you move God from your back to your front. Number two, it is praise and thanksgiving that makes you win without sweat. It is praise and thanksgiving that makes you win every fierce battle without sweat. If you are watching me and you are sweating in life, if you are watching me and you are struggling in life, if you are watching me and you are under pressure, you are stressed out, step into praise and thanksgiving and see your struggles come to an end. See your challenges come to an end. See your predicaments come to an end. It is praise and thanksgiving that makes you win without sweat. Wherever you are watching me from, with your hands and shout praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. I said shout praise the Lord. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Those who are thankful live in the realms of the triumph. Those who are thankful live in the realms of the triumph. Tonight every problem that has been, that has been a concern to you will become an issue of a walk over in the name of Jesus. Every challenge, every issue, every problem that has become a concern to you will become an issue of a walk over in the name of Jesus. I see God moving you from back to your front tonight. I see God moving from your back to your front. God is moving from your back to your front. God is moving from your back to your front. God is moving from your back to your front in the name of Jesus. All that you have to do is to give him things. In this first night of our 40 days prayer and fasting, wherever you are watching me from, shout thank you Jesus. Shout Father I thank you. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for divine provision. I thank you for divine protection. I thank you for how far you have brought me, my family, my career, my ministry, my destiny, my business. Have a rejoicing heart. Be grateful. Be grateful, be thankful, and see God step into your case to intervene for you in the name of Jesus. After Joshua died, Israel was supposed to go and possess the land in Judges chapter 1. And they said, who shall go before us? And the Lord said, Judah. Judah means praise. He said, put praise in front. Put praise in front. In front. When praise is in front in any battle, the battle becomes a walkover. When thanksgiving is in front in any battle, the battle becomes a walkover. When praise went ahead, the victory was assured. 
as praise goes ahead of you, as thanksgiving goes ahead of you, you will experience divine intervention in the name of Jesus Christ. You will experience supernatural turnarounds. You will be moving from one glory to another glory. You will be moving from one level of favor to another level of favor in the name of Jesus. When praise is in front, in any battle, the battle becomes a walkover. Praise went ahead and the victory was assured. I declare over your life this evening that God will show up through praise, through thanksgiving. And that enemy that does not want you to move to your next level. That enemy that does not want you to break through. That enemy that does not want you to experience favor will come down in the name of Jesus. When you pray, angels are involved. But when you praise, God gets involved. Anytime you pray, angels are involved. But when you praise, God gets involved because God inhabits the praise of his people. The Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known to God. So prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not optional. It's not an optional thing. Thanksgiving is mandatory. Thanksgiving is, is, is something that God has commanded you and I to do. And for you to experience divine intervention, you must be grateful unto God. You must be thankful unto God. And in this first day of our 40 days, the first day of the ninth month, wave your hands and shout, thank you, Jesus. I didn't hear you. I said, shout, thank you, Jesus. Now, what does thanksgiving offer? What does thanksgiving offer? When I thank God, what do I expect? When I thank God, what do I expect? Number one, your thanksgiving gives wings to your prayer to fly. Your thanksgiving gives wings to your prayer to fly. Prayer cannot fly without thanksgiving. Prayer is wingless without thanksgiving. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. So prayer cannot fly without thanksgiving. It is prayer, it is thanksgiving that gives prayer wings. It says that with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So thanksgiving gives prayer wings to fly. In the model of prayer that Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, the Bible said, in this manner, therefore I pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus said, come before me with thanksgiving. Jesus said, come before me with praise. Jesus said, come before me with adoration. Jesus, Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Come before him worshipfully. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Look at verse 11. 10 to verse 11. Before you say, give us this day our daily bread, before you ask God for anything, you must first glorify him. You must first thank him. You must first celebrate him. Jump to verse 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Look at another thanksgiving statement. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. 
So thanksgiving is the alpha and the omega of prayers. Thanksgiving is the alpha and the omega of prayers. Thanksgiving must fill your life for God to step into the situation. If you want God to step into the situation, if you want God to step into the case and, and, and bring a miracle to pass in your life, you must be thankful. You must be grateful. We must thank him for what he has done before thanking him or before asking him for what we want him to do for us. We must thank him for what he has done, for what he has done. Before he will even move us to the next level or before we will ask him for what we want him to do for us. Thanksgiving is non-negotiable. Thanksgiving is not optional. Thanksgiving is a necessity. Therefore, wherever you are watching me from this beautiful Tuesday evening, I pray for you that the grace will come upon you to be thankful in the name of Jesus. Hear this child of God. Thanksgiving is appreciation in anticipation. Thanksgiving is appreciation in anticipating. Thanksgiving is appreciation in anticipating. You appreciate him for the past. Whilst you are in anticipation or once you are anticipating for a glorious future. Once you appreciate him for the past. You are telling him, Lord, I'm in anticipation or I'm anticipating for a glorious future. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Be thankful to him and bless his name. This evening as we begin our 40 days prayer and fasting, let us step into thanksgiving. Because as you and I step into thanksgiving, we are going to give our prayers wings to fly. So thanksgiving gives prayers wings to fly. Without thanksgiving, our prayers cannot fly. And until our prayers fly, we cannot experience supernatural turnarounds. I pray that you will be grateful this evening in the name of Jesus. Number two. Thanksgiving brings you into a state of peace. Thanksgiving brings you into a state of peace. Thanksgiving brings you into a state of calmness, which is a fundamental requirement for God to work in your life. If God will ever work in your life, you have to be peaceful, you have to be calm, you have to be at rest. Remember in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now look at verse 7. And the peace of God, and the peace of God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything. Be at peace. Hold on to your peace. And God will show forth with his power in your life. And God will show forth strongly in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be anxious for nothing. Worry about anything. Be at rest in the Lord. Be at peace in the Lord. Thanksgiving brings you into a state of peace. Now, let's look at a very interesting scripture. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. There are many of us watching me that God is impressing on my heart that you are worried. You are worried about life. But the Lord said I should tell you, put the scripture on the screen for me again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will put on is not life more than food. And the body more than clothing. Jesus is saying, it's not life more than food. And your body more than clothing? 
Why are you worried about what to wear? Why are you worried about what to eat? Why are you worried in life? You are worried about everything. You are worried about your head, your eyes, your nose. You are worried about many of you who are always worried about everything. But the Lord is telling us that be anxious for nothing. Now jump to verse 26. Put on the screen. Watch verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Are you not more value than they? He says that which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature. So as you worry or as you live in worry, have you been able to add one cubit to your height or one cubit to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. What an interesting scripture. Jump to verse 30. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field. Now the grass of the field. Have you thought of how they grow? Have you thought of how they become green? Have you thought of how they look good? Even in the dry season? Now if God so clothes the grass of the field. Which today is. And tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So anytime you worry, you have little faith. Anytime you are anxious, you have little faith. Anytime you doubt God and you are apprehensive or you, you, you are living in worry or in anxiety, it means you have little faith. Look at verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, the Lord is telling us that we should not worry. I pray for you that tonight grace will come upon you. As we have begun our 40 days prayer and fasting, may you not worry about anything. May you not worry about anything. May you not be anxious of nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. He says that, Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Put on the screen, verse 31. Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is thanking Jesus. That is thanking God. That is being appreciative of the goodness of God. The privilege of knowing him. And the Bible says, and all these things shall be added to you. I love the verse 34. Put the verse 34 on the screen. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. 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 If you are watching me, wherever you are watching me from, I want you to shout, I will not worry about tomorrow. Say, I will not worry about tomorrow. Declare, I shall not worry about tomorrow. He says that therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its, about its own things. Sufficient for the day as its, as its own trouble. Do not worry about anything child of God. Live a worry free life. Tell your brother seated beside you. Tell your sister seated beside you that live a worry-free life. Live a worry-free life. Live a worry-free life. Somebody shout, I will live a worry-free life. I didn't hear you. Say it loud and clear. I will live a worry-free life. In the name of Jesus, hear this. In the realm of the spirit, God does not go to work until you go to sleep. In the realm of the spirit, God does not go to work until you go to sleep. In other words, tonight, go to sleep. That is, be at rest. Be at peace. Be thankful. Be grateful. Be thankful to God for how far he has brought you. You may not be there yet, but you have left where you used to be. I said you may not be at your final destination, but you have left where you used to be. That is why you have to be grateful. Even where you are today is somebody's testimony. 
Where you are today is somebody's miracle. Where you are today is somebody's breakthrough. So, so be grateful unto God. Have a heart full of gratitude. Have a heart full of appreciation in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Just like no doctor can work on you until they put you to anesthesia. In the same way, our anxiety, our worry is the reason why God is not working. Our anxiety, our worry is the reason why God is not working. If you will live, if you will step out of worry, if you will step out of anxiety, if you will step out of unbelief and begin to thank God and begin to praise God, God will begin to work in your life. I pray for you that from today, the 1st of September till the end of this month, may you experience strange testimonies through thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. The cure for worry is Thanksgiving. The cure for anxiety is Thanksgiving. I have never met an anxious Thanksgiver in my life before. I have never met an anxious Thanksgiver in my life before. Every Thanksgiver is at rest. Every Thanksgiver is calm. Every Thanksgiver is cool. Every Thanksgiver is bold. Thanksgiving is therapy to anxiety. Thanksgiving is therapy to anxiety. Watch this. The more thankful you are, the more peaceful you become. The more thankful you are, the more peaceful you become. The most thankful person or the most grateful person is the one who is calmer. Is the one who is cool. The more thankful you are, the calmer you become. The more thankful you are, the calmer you become. The reason why people have not received their blessings is because they are anxious. I cast the spirit of worry out of your life. I cast the spirit of anxiety out of your life. I cast the spirit of depression out of your life. In the name of Jesus. And tonight, as you and I offer thanks to the Lord, every trace of anxiety in your life shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your right hand and repeat after me. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hear this. There is no problem that does not have a solution. Just be thankful. There is no problem that does not have a solution. Just be thankful. There is no difficulty that cannot be dissolved. Just be thankful. Tonight, whatever area of your life you need divine intervention in your economic life, in your finances, in your ministry, in your business, in your marriage, in your family, in your career. I see God intervening for you. I see God intervening for you. I see God intervening for you. Just be thankful. Just be thankful. Just be thankful. I see God intervening for you. Jesus in John chapter 6 verse 11. Lifted up five loaves of bread and two fishes. And the Bible said he gave thanks to God and there was multiplication. As you lift both of your hands high above your head and begin to give the Lord thanks, I declare multiplication over your life. I declare multiplication over your business. I declare multiplication over your finances. I declare multiplication. Somebody shout multiplication. Tonight, Change your camp from the camp of complainers. Change your camp from the camp of memories. And step into the camp of thanksgivers. Step into the camp of thanksgivers. When you give thanks to God, you are securing the peace of God which is required for miracles to take place. I pray that grace, strength, favor will come upon you to be thankful this evening. Number three, number three. Thanksgiving ushers you into the realm of multiplication. 
Thanksgiving ushers you into the realm of multiplication. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be few. So as you thank the Lord, God ushers you into the realm of multiplication. I pray for you this evening that you will not diminish in the name of Jesus. You will not be small in the name of Jesus. You will not be little in the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving ushers you into the realm of multiplication. Thanksgiving terminates smallness and brings you into the class of greatness. May your thanks this evening usher you into the class of greatness in the name of Jesus. In the first church, according to Acts chapter 2 verse 47, the Bible speaking said, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who have been saved. So praise or thanksgiving is additive. Praise or thanksgiving is additive. Nothing reduces with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is key to multiplication. As you give the Lord thanks this evening, I see all around multiplication. I see all around increase. I see all around multiplication. You will never become little. You will never become small. You will never go down in the name of Jesus Christ because thanksgiving is key to multiplication. Number four, thanksgiving is the key to divine intervention. For every intervention to take place, it requires faith to be at work. Watch this. For every intervention to take place, it requires faith to be at work. And for faith to be at work, thanksgiving must be engaged. For faith to be at work, thanksgiving must be engaged. Look at how Jesus approached it. In John chapter 11 verse 40. Concerning Lazarus. When they had told him that Lazarus was dead for four days and he was thinking, Jesus said to Martha, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? If you would believe, you will see the glory of God. If you would believe, you will see the glory of God. The word believe meant thanks. And Jesus went further and showed them how to believe. Look at verse 41 of John chapter 11. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So thanksgiving is faith at work. Every time you are thanking God, you are simply telling God, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Every time you are praising God, you are simply telling the Lord, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Thanksgiving is faith at work. Thanksgiving is faith at work. Every time you are thanking the Lord, you are saying, Lord, I believe. And I know you will still do something on my behalf. And watch this. The Bible said in Hebrews that without faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, without faith, it is impossible to see God or to move God. Without faith, it is impossible to experience God. So thanksgiving connects you to faith. And faith connects you to divine intervention. Remember the message is titled Engaging Thanksgiving for Divine Intervention. Engaging Thanksgiving for Divine Intervention. Also concerning Abraham, in Romans chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible said, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham did not stagger or waver at the promise of God concerning Isaac. He continued to give glory to God and Isaac arrived. There is somebody watching me this beautiful Tuesday evening. I see your Isaac arriving. 
I see your Isaac arriving. I see God bringing your Isaac to your life in the name of Jesus. Isaac came on the wings of thanksgiving and praise. And also in Luke chapter 17, verse 17 to 19, Jesus healed 10 lepers. Only one returned and in a loud voice glorified the Lord. And in verse 19 of Luke chapter 17, Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. So anytime you are saying thank you, Jesus, what you are directly saying to God is that, Lord, I believe you. 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 Thanksgiving is an expression of faith. And faith is key for divine intervention. When you are not thanking God, you are not believing God. But when you are thanking God, you are believing God. The mountains will move before every thanksgiver. The mountains will move before every thanksgiver. The Red Sea will open before every thanksgiver. The thanksgiver always experiences all round multiplication. So the thanksgiver will always experience divine intervention or all round multiplication. Number five, thanksgiving facilitates fulfillment of God's promises in our lives. Thanksgiving facilitates the fulfillment of God's promises in our lives. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Thanksgiving facilitates fulfillment of God's promises in our lives. This is the will of God. And after you have done the will of God, remember the will of God is thanksgiving. Anytime you are thanking the Lord, you are doing his will. And then what is the will of God? Or, or what will the will of God do for us? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. For you have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, after you have given him things, you may receive the promise. I pray for you today. That as you thank the Lord, may you receive the promise. As you praise God, may you receive the promise. Every promise of God concerning your life shall come to pass through the platform of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Number six, thanksgiving will bring a change of story. Thanksgiving will bring a change of story. May your story change. May your story change. May your story change. In the name of Jesus. It will turn the dead things around you into life. Thanksgiving. Any dead thing around your life this evening. As you begin to thank the Lord. May the Lord turn it into life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving. is powerful. It will bring a change of story. It will bring a change of story. May the blind see this evening. May the deaf hear this evening. May the cripple jump up tonight. I pray for you today that fibroids will, dis will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. May that growth in your body be destroyed in the name of Jesus. May cancer, HIV, diabetes disappear from your body tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall lift up your right hand and shout, Father, I thank you. I didn't hear you, child of God. Shout, Father, I thank you. I didn't hear you say loud and clear. Shout, Father, I thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Very quickly, I want us to look at how do I provoke divine intervention through thanksgiving? How do I provoke divine intervention through thanksgiving? How do I provoke divine intervention through thanksgiving? Remember, Jehoshaphat is our model in the process tonight. Jehoshaphat is our model in the process tonight. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat was a great man. He woke up one day and he saw three great kings rose up against him. Three kings, three nations, they rose up against him. Hear this. No matter how strong you are as human, one day you will meet people who are stronger than you. 
no matter how strong you are as human, one day you will meet people who are stronger than you. But every time you see strong men around you or against you, Remember the stronger God. Remember the stronger God. Remember the stronger God. Somebody shout, I shall remember the stronger God tonight. Remember the stronger God. The I am that I am. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Every time you see mighty men around you or against you, lift up your head to look up to the almighty God. Lift up your head and look up to the almighty God. Watch this. The Bible said when you read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible said the heart of Jehoshaphat feared. The heart of Jehoshaphat feared. Listen to me today. It is natural to fear. It is very, very natural to fear. In fact, all men fear. All women fear. All boys fear. All girls fear, but don't live in fear. Remember the Bible said in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God did not give us the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Power is a spirit. Love is a spirit. Sound mind is a spirit. I pray for you today. In the spirit of fear operating in your life, I cast it out. I cast it out. I cast it out. I cast it out. I pray that the spirit of power will possess you. The spirit of love will possess you. The spirit of sound mind will possess you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anytime you see yourself living in fear, what you have to do is that quickly turn your fears to God. Quickly turn your fears to God and step into thanksgiving and connect to faith and you shall experience divine intervention. That was what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat was afraid. He was scared. But he turned his fears to the Lord. When you, when, when you fear, don't stand still. When you fear, run with your fear to God. Anytime you are afraid, don't stand still. But run. Run with your fear to the Lord. What a powerful statement. When you fear, don't stand still. When you fear, run with your fear to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 3. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Remember Judah means praise. Judah means praise. I love the verse 12. Jump to verse 12. Look, watch the screen, verse 12. Jehoshaphat said, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? Will you not judge them? Will you not judge them? When you see enemies rise up against you, child of God, don't keep quiet. Say something. Jehoshaphat said, my heart cry for you tonight, Lord. My heart cry for you tonight, Lord. My heart cry for you tonight, Lord. Will you not judge them? May the Lord judge all your enemies tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. The people have risen up against you. The people who want to destroy your life. May the Lord bring judgment to them. In the name of Jesus. Let's continue to read verse 12. For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. But our eyes are upon you. But our eyes are upon you. Somebody lift your hands up and tell the Lord that Lord my eyes are upon you. In this 40 days praying fasting, my eyes are upon you. 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 Jehoshaphat said, Lord, our eyes are upon you. Until your praise goes up, the king does not come down. Until your eyes is lifted up unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, He will never come down to your aid. So, to provoke divine intervention through thanksgiving, number one, let your eyes be upon Him. 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 Don't look at the situation. 
Don't count the enemies. Let your eyes be on him. Let your eyes be upon him. Let your eyes be on him. Listen, child of God, the more you look at your problems, the bigger they become. Looking at your problem is what gives them room for enlargement. The more you look at your problems, the bigger they become. But looking away from your problem is what reduces them into dwarf. Because you cannot see the almighty God and be threatened by a dwarf. I pray for you this beautiful Tuesday evening that your eyes will be upon him. Your eyes will be upon him. Your eyes will be upon him. David said, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He said, he that keepeth Israel will not sleep or slumber. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will lift up your eyes unto the king of kings and the lord of lords. And as you lift up your eyes unto him, may the Lord step into that situation. May the Lord step into that battle. May the Lord step into that issue and bring a divine intervention for you. When you don't know what next to do, let your eyes be on God. When you don't know what next to do, let your eyes be on God. When you don't know what next to do, step in praise and thanksgiving. So I know somebody is watching me tonight saying that, oh Lord, they have ridiculed me. They have molested me. They have insulted me. They have managed to break me. They have pushed me out of my matrimonial home. They have pushed me out of my position. I don't know what to do, Lord. I don't know where to go, Lord. The Lord said, I should tell you tonight, let your eyes be on him. Let your eyes be on him. Let your eyes be on him. Let your eyes be be on him. Tonight let your eyes be on him. Jehoshaphat said, our eyes are upon you. In Psalm 34 verse 5, put on the screen for me quickly. Psalm 34 verse 5, they, the Bible said, they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. I pray for you, you shall not be ashamed. Shame is far away from you. Shame is far away from you. The Bible said they looked unto him and their faces were not ashamed. You shall not be put to shame in this season in the name of Jesus. You will experience divine intervention. You will experience supernatural intervention. You will experience supernatural turnaround in the name of Jesus. Back to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Look at verse 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Look at verse 15. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitant of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thou says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Whatever battle that is following you, as you are thanking God and praising him tonight, God will take over that battle. God will take over that challenge. God will take over that issue. God will take over that problem in the name of Jesus. The prophet said to Jehoshaphat, he said, for the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Listen to me. When men say it is over, God takes over. When men say it is over, God takes over. And when God takes over, it is over. When God takes over, it is over. I'm here to announce to you tonight that your own battle is over in the name of Jesus. Your own challenges are over in the name of Jesus. Your own problems are over in the name of Jesus. When God takes over the battle, it is over. When God takes over the issue, it is over. I pray for you that as you look up to God, may God take over the battle. May God take over the challenge. May God take over the issue issue. May God take over the problem in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be grateful to God this evening. May you be praiseful to God this evening. May you be thankful to God this evening in the name of Jesus. As we start the fast today, receive grace to be thankful. Receive grace to be praiseful. Receive grace to be, to be grateful, to be thankful in the name of Jesus. Number two. Number two. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. 
Be not afraid. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 17. It, 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 it mentioned the statement, be not afraid again. Be not afraid. Second Chronicles 20 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord is with you. For the Lord is with you. Anytime you are waving your hands and you are saying thank you Jesus. You have thrown an invitation to God. You have invited God. Anytime you say thank you Jesus. Anytime you say Father I thank you. Father I celebrate you. Father I magnify you. Father I glorify you. Thanksgiving is invitation to God to come and fight your battles for you. This evening as you appreciate God. As you thank God. May he come down and fight your battles for you. May he come down and fight your challenges for you. May he come down and fight your issues for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every time you say, Father, I thank you. God says, somebody is inviting me there. Somebody is inviting me there. Somebody is inviting me there. Can you wave your hands? Can you wave your hands and shout, Thank you, Jesus. Can you wave your hands and shout, Glory be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, mighty God. Thanksgiving is an invitation to God. So, number two says, Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. The Lord said, I should tell you this beautiful Tuesday evening, the first of September 2020. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Number three, stir him up with quality praise. Stir him up with quality praise. Not any kind of song, but quality praise. How you address God depends on how he will address your issue. Quality praise. David was always singing psalms depending on the situation in which he found himself. The father of fatherless. Many times you will hear David say, the father of fatherless, the helper of widows. The father of fatherless, the helper of widows. Psalm 136, the Bible says, For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Stir him up with quality praise. Stir him up with quality praise. Stir him up with quality praise. Don't just say any word. Don't just sing any song. Make sure it's quality. Make sure it's quality. They said everything that goes up comes down. So anytime praises goes up, blessings comes down. Psalm 47 verse 5. God has gone up with a shout. God has gone up with a shout. And when God goes up with a shout, he comes down in his almightiness to deliver us from every attack of the enemy, to make a way of escape for us. He, he comes down in his almightiness. In his agitations, he comes down in, in a stronger manner and he causes divine intervention in our lives. There is somebody watching me. I prophesy over your life. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Receive divine intervention this week. Receive divine intervention this month. Receive divine intervention this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love Psalm 136 as I conclude my message for this evening. Let me read the whole scripture to us. You'll love it. David wrote it. Psalm 136 verse 1 to 18. David said, put on the screen, New King James. David said, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to God of God's for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords for his mercy endures forever. Verse 4. To him who alone does great wonders, may God do great wonders in your life for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights 
for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn for his mercy endures forever and brought out Israel from among them for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two for his mercy endures forever and made Israel pass through the midst of it for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings for his mercy endures forever. Verse 18. He slew famous kings for his mercy endures forever. Sihon, king of Amorite, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, king of Basha, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage for his mercy endures forever. A heritage of Israel for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our lowly state for his mercy endures forever. And rescued us from our enemies for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh? God gives food to all flesh. I pray for you from now till the end of the year. May God always put food on your table for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Tonight, as your thanksgiving goes up, may his blessings come down for you. Tonight, as your praise goes up, may his blessings come down for you. In the name of Jesus. All throughout the month of September, you shall enjoy series of testimonies. May you enjoy strength testimonies. All throughout this 40 days praying and fasting, and my prayer for you tonight, as I bring the sermon in conclusion, as I conclude tonight's teaching, all that I pray for you is that grace will come upon you to be thankful. Stop complaining, stop murmuring. Be grateful and be thankful. Is enforcing the will of God by going the ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He's not moved by our tears. He's not moved by our shouting. He's only moved by a shout of faith. Any time you begin to please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work. By faith, Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life. You will experience all-round blessings by faith.